Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, earlier this week, NOAA released its data for April, and we can see over here on the left the statewide average temperature ranks. Even though we had a few pretty substantial cold snaps throughout the month of April and some bigger snows uh, in parts of the central United States, overall, April will not be remembered as a colder month. I mean, if you look here, we don't see any of our states picking up on the below average uh, color bar here. Where the problems have have been a been primarily with precipitation. And even though we saw a pocket in the middle part of the country show up dry in April, where they made a lot of planting progress uh, in parts of southern Iowa, uh, and where things were really dry after the torrential and just epic flooding in parts of Nebraska, western Iowa, and South Dakota. Look at this. We had some places down here where they were having some of their some of their driest weather on record. In fact, I saw I got some reports from some folks in there that said they'd gone 30 days without any rainfall. Well, all around it, it's been exceptionally wet and that has caused some delays with planting and I wanted to look at this from a little different perspective so I made it this map now what this map shows you in color coding here is the number of days over the last 45 days that have had rainfall greater than 0.1 inches on any given day now I made this go from red to blue and I really want you to focus on this color right here moving into the blues. Wherever you see that color moving into the blues, that would be those would be locations that have had more than half of their days with rainfall. I'm talking about this quarter right in through here and here and also in the Pacific Northwest, which is very normal for this time of year. Parts of North Dakota, you know, drier. Uh, this quarter in through here, drier compared to some of those very, very wet regions. We've had just some locations where the rainfall has been so frequent we've not made planting progress. And that's how we get to this map. You see corn planting progress compared to average. We're in deficit. We are well behind. And I think the easiest way to look at it is by looking at these graphs. So 2019, as of Monday of this week, currently sits here. And we know that due to the large system moving through the middle part of the country, we're not expecting major planting progress. Maybe we'll be over somewhere like this by week 19. Now, if that's the case, uh, that's the case. 2019 will go from being the fourth slowest planting progress since 1990 to maybe the second. The big question I have to answer is, after we get Monday's report, will the next week take us on a trajectory like we saw in 2014 like this? Will we continue to see maybe a slight slowdown but make more progress? Or might 2019 continue on its way toward being possibly the slowest on record? That's the question I have to answer, and let's dig right on into this. Certainly, the last three days has been problematic with that large low-pressure system moving through the middle part of the country. Remember that drier sector in through here? Well, rain has come in, and it has come in in buckets. We've had some locations in parts of Kansas, which are still under flood warning right now, get between 6 and 10 inches of rainfall. Very wet in parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, or I'm sorry, Louisiana, Arkansas, and eastern Texas, as it has been just north of Houston. But we brought rain to Iowa. We brought rain up here to North Dakota, or probably South Dakota, and also into Minnesota and Wisconsin as well. This system has been a problem and it's moving east right now. Early in the morning, this is valid about four o'clock in the morning. What do we see? The heavier rainfall moving through this corridor in Illinois. It's going to be moving to Indiana, moving toward Michigan, moving out of Wisconsin. Heavier rain here spreading in this direction and also dealing with some leftover rain in parts uh, of, uh, of the Panhandle of Texas. This, by the way, is snow, and we've been accumulating it in that area. And by the way, we're not yet done with snow if you're over in this region. We'll talk about that in a few seconds. Here's our problem. This is also our solution. <laughs> that deep trough that you see there, seriously cold air for this time of year move uh, this time of year moving into it the solution though is that this trough is going to kick east and we want that to happen because as it moves east it will remove for us the strong moisture advection out of the gulf of mexico which has been just soaking much of the united states but the problem in the near term is that that trough well look at the cold front beneath it that's some really cold air that is moving south here. And as a consequence of that cold air behind that cold front, look at what our all hazards weather map shows us in the day on Monday. Early Monday morning, widespread freeze warnings right there through parts of Nebraska. We have frost advisors on one side and we're watching a frost watch on the other. We've got flooding in Kansas. We've got flood watches in parts of Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. Dense fog advisor here and oh yeah, we're still dealing with that snow uh, in parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin. So this is still kind of the, the, the tail end of this powerful system still causing some problems. But let's look bigger picture. 
As that trough digs through, our next five days does feature a corridor right here in the middle part of the country that will be much cooler than average. As the trough moves through, does it dry out? Yes, but it's not the kind of drying out we want. We want 80. We want uh, wind and we want no rain. Instead, it's cool, which is going to prevent our fast evaporation rates from ever showing up. Meanwhile, Pacific Northwest enjoys a ridge, rapid accumulation of green degree day units, which is exactly what we need in the month of May in this area. What about getting out to the day 6 through 10? We see the broader trough really occupying much of the southern and eastern part of the United States, but a ridge begins to build in here, bringing in some warmth to parts of Montana in the north central plains. And as we look out to days uh, 11 through 15, we're going to watch for a very interesting pattern begin to develop again. It's one that I don't like to see given the planting delays that we've had, but you can see here the cooler pattern in the southwest. That's due to some strong winds coming in this direction and possibly more ridging developing here over the eastern part of the United States. And that's something we're going to talk about in a few moments here. Next five days of precip. Yes, this is dry, but it's also cool. We're still going to be dealing with multiple rounds of heavy precipitation down in this corridor, and the current system as it moves on off to the north and east still plaguing that region with rain. We will be watching the potential for rain in the San Joaquin River Valley with this upper level trough that's just still sitting and spinning here, causing some problems with widely scattered showers and storms in the mountains. But getting down here in the San Joaquin Valley, this is an area where we don't want to be seeing precip. This is not the time of year for it. And also, just to let you know, I am going to keep watching this area down here in the southeast because it's an area that's largely missed out on a lot of that very heavy rainfall and is actually showing up in the drought monitor as dry. So that's your next five days. What about day four through ten? You see the drier pocket in here. That's because this trough moves east. So it's going to start off cool but be dry. Now, I want you to remember something here. Even though you see it showing up with a drier bias in that area, it is not going to be dry every day. There are still going to be a few rainfall events that move through there. It's just drier than the climatological average. Okay? And finally, before we get into some of the details, look at this. This is week two. So this map doesn't even start until next Thursday and goes to the following Thursday. My concern is why we start to see the heavier precipitation amounts that greater than average in that area. We got to talk about that pattern. Okay. All right. Short term, what are we dealing with? Let's just click play and watch the current system move east. Throughout the day on Thursday, you can see this is wrapping its way up into Michigan, moving over to Indiana, Ohio, and then we have more rain moving through parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. This is much lighter rain than we have been seeing. If there's a region today we're watching out for some stronger to severe storms, it's going to be to the south inside of that area I just drew. Meanwhile, on the back side of this, don't be surprised in Colorado if you see some snow at the high plains with this one and some lighter rain just to the east of it. Well, this system continues to progress throughout uh, the, the day on Thursday, moving toward the east. You can see it there. Widely scattered showers, potentially in parts of Iowa and in parts of Missouri, stretching down here into parts of Texas. But you can see, look over there in California, tonight into tomorrow morning, upper level low spinning. You've got some rain in a place that doesn't often see much rain. Now getting into the day on Friday, it's going to be in Texas that we see quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity, and it's moving over toward the lower Mississippi River Valley with time, but widely scattered showers and storms across a wide sector here as the main frontal boundary still hangs out in that area. Meanwhile, we are seeing a little system skirt along the coast, the coast, I'm sorry, the border between Canada and, uh, and the United States, and look, see it right there? Maybe you bring in some widely scattered showers and storms to parts of the Dakotas as we progress through the day on Friday into early Saturday morning. So I told you, even though it's drying out, it's not dry everywhere. Now watch what the pattern is suggesting, okay? As I play this forward, there's the big cool down that's coming. See it there in the middle part of the country? But I'm going to give you a quick lesson about weather systems, all right? We can see we have a ridge here and a trough there. Now, what I want you to know is always draw a line through the axis of your trough. Downstream of it, which is to the east, this is the wetter sector. We're on the back side, this is the drier sector. We have upper level convergence on the dry side, making things drier, and upper level divergence on the, on the east side, making it wetter. So whenever you watch these troughs moves across, they, they have a wet side on the east and a dry side on the west. Okay, that's the lesson. Now, this pattern is cool but dry. And we start to see this ridge move in to the west, getting into the Intermountain West and eventually toward the High Plains, warming things up there first. 
But the Pacific Ocean's telling me a bit of a different story. The story is the pattern's not locked up. See the trough here, ridge to the south? Whew, the jet stream's gonna be screaming in between this. And the question or concern I have is what happens once you get out to the 18th, 19th, and 20th? Now we have this. Trough is here, ridge is over here, and in between them, remember, that's the wetter sector. That's why in week two, you saw it progressing toward a wetter pattern from the west to the east as this trough digs in. Now, we're pretty far out in the forecast here, but this is at least what the atmosphere has been kind of showing us is going to happen as we progress out that far. Let's now look at some of the precipitation details with this. Starting off with the current system, well, we've seen it move, as you just saw there, we've seen it move toward the north and east. Getting into Friday evening, widely scattered showers and thunderstorms down in this corridor as the tail end of this front still hangs out in this area. So you can see, look at that. We've got a lot of rain that will be happening in that area as we progress through the overnight hours on Friday, getting into morning on Saturday. So heavy rain in through this area. Meanwhile, there's the system I told you about coming through the North Central Plains. This is just a lot of very light rain. Not everybody's going to be getting it out of this one. With time, we see that lighter rain moving throughout the overnight hours on Saturday into parts of Minnesota and Iowa, whereas the Eastern Corn Belt, look at this. This is now Saturday night into Sunday morning is getting another round of heavier rain. Progressing into next week. Now, this is now getting into the day four through day 10 time period. Look, we got some lighter rain still lingering through parts of the Corn Belt, and it's going to be wet along the East Coast. But as I get out to Monday into Tuesday, really, we're going to see the midsection of the country drying down where we do see precipitation on either side of it. Okay, now watch this. This is now Monday night into Tuesday morning. This is that drier time period, but I said it's not completely dry. Watch what I mean. By next Tuesday afternoon, getting into Tuesday evening, we're watching a weak low pressure system move across the Dakotas into Minnesota and Iowa by the time we get into early Wednesday morning. Gets over to Wisconsin, Michigan, and that could bring some rain. Remember, any rain in that location at this time of year slows us down again. And so what do we see by middle of next week? A system skirting through bringing in some precip. So yes, it's drier than average, but it is not completely dry. That's my point when showing you this, okay? So only toward the end of next week, we start to see high pressure dominate. But as I get you out here to the 18th, 19th, now we're back into this again. And that's why I'm watching that corridor for kind of lighting up with more severe weather and more storms. We're just watching it as we progress toward the end of this month, all right? That's where we get to these two maps. Next 15 days from the European model over here on the left, GEFS over here on the right. They tell a pretty similar story. Wet corridor here and there with a drier pattern here. I'll put a D in it right there in the center part of the country. Now that doesn't mean dry every day, but look, you can see a similar thing going on here with the GFS. Wet, wet, wet around it, but a little drier pocket here in the middle part of the country. So will we make the planting progress? We will. We'll be making some progress in this area, but it's not going to happen rapidly, which means I expect to continue to see 2019 lose ground compared to other years on planting progress. So this is not the most, the best picture I could paint for you in terms of uh, precipitation and temperature. Okay, quick global update. Still dealing with some a highly amplified but cooler pattern in Central Europe. Very warm in the Russian wheat belt over here, uh, but still cool. And we're not seeing the frost like we were seeing in this part uh, uh, of Europe, but still cool. India absolutely getting scorched after that tropical cyclone soaked the eastern part of the country. We have multiple days coming up in a row with triple digit heat. So that's one spot in the in the world that's dealing with some very, very hot conditions. And just to finish up, I'm going to take you to South America. We don't have much of a story here. We should be moving toward the drier time period. We still see it wet up in the Amazon. But as we try to finish off this safrina crop, we're just not picking up on any major concerning patterns. Yes, it's wet in southern Brazil and parts of Paraguay and northern Argentina but still not hearing about any major problems and we certainly aren't seeing any major frost risk coming up from the south where the colder air sits. So that's kind of just a quick look at what's going on around the globe. With that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this forecast video. We at Nutrient Ag Solutions hope you look forward to all of our forecast videos that are released daily at my.nutrientagsolutions.com. Hope you all have a great end to your week. We'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you.